ball. If he throws it 80, I might be able to see the ball right out of his hand and use that as my stride release. If he throws it 70, I may want to see the ball 20 feet before I start my stride. Very, very important. We call it rhythm adjustment. Rhythm adjustment. That's what rhythm adjustment means, and that's what arriving on time means. And if you take your stride the same for every pitcher you face, you're naturally going to be off time on a lot of them, right? So think about rhythm adjustment. Write the term down, rhythm adjustment. Be sure you understand that it is my stride, and when I start my stride, that sets whether or not I arrive on time. And I want to be sure and be on time with control. On plane means that the body stays in a good power base, in balance, properly stacked. Notice my head and shoulders staying above my hips. We don't fall down here to hit the baseball. We don't hit the ball. I haven't seen very many good hitters with their rear end sticking out. We stay stacked, we stay up on plane, and the bat stays on plane. When we fall to the ball, the bat falls to the ball. When we fall to the ball, up here, we break down, we get outside of our power air base, we lose leverage, and we change the plane of the bat. When we remain stacked and up, we stay on plane. In rhythm means what? It means staying in sequence. So the stride controls rhythm adjustment. Got it? On plane means staying in the power base, staying properly stacked, staying erect and in leverage. And in rhythm means staying in sequence. One, two, three, four. Stride, back knee, lever assembly, release. It's the third definition. A fourth definition is hitting is talent, technique, and time. Talent, technique, and time. We're going to recruit talent. We try to measure those tools and we try to recruit athletes who have some talent, some good eye hand coordination, bat speed, hand strength. We're looking for all those things. Then we're going to teach technique. Our ball clubs have averaged a run on innings scored for 1,000 college ball games over 16 years. We think we can teach technique. We see hitters accept technique. The key ingredient then is the third element, time. Will the player spend the time necessary to become a good player? We're the same way as coaches. If we just jump out at the guy and say, hey, here's how to do it and walk away from him, then he may not get there. If the coach is not willing to spend the time necessary with the player to teach technique, the player can't get there. Remember, we learn by the power of space repetition. If you only get one exposure to this set of knowledge today, 14 days from now, you probably will have forgotten 95% of it. So taking notes is important. But you will only retain about 60% of it. You'll only keep about 60% of it after exposing your mind to this set of material at least six times. That is a known fact called the power of space repetition. That is what learning is about. And you must understand how you learn before you can learn. So you need this in your minds in front of you six more times, and then you'll capture half of what was said. Okay? That's how the human mind works. Understand the power of space repetition. Good. I think we're at a point where we've defined hitting four or five different ways. We have a pretty good understanding as how the body's going to work. Now let's add one system to finish up today. Let's add one system called the touch system. We have said two things that are really important so far about two major areas where, where you make mistakes. Again, there are two major areas where you make mistakes in hitting, and the touch system will address those areas. One is on the stride, overstriding and losing the power base. And two is the hand reaction, tension with the stride, as if the puppet effect is there. You stride, you leap, your hands gain tension, and we look like the puppeteer, like the same wires hooked to the front foot as it is the top hand. These two things destroy power base hitting and sequential unlocking. We have no chance to get them back. So if we're going to help the player get there, what kind of system are we going to teach? We're going to teach what's called a touch system. We're going to place the hands in a short stroke position. We call this the basic arc. 
If we have a hitter that swings the bat from back in here, all right, that's a full swing. Bang, he learns to bring it right in here. That's a full swing. Bring it right in there and bang it. All right, now we're gonna take the full swing away from you. And we're gonna go to what is called a basic arc, a shorter stroke. And we're gonna use as many as six different locations in the touch system. One, we're gonna place the bat in here. You remember we said in gear number three, we want the lever assembly to move to midpoint. So then the hand and back elbow will control centrifugal force and there will be an automatic release. So we bring it in here and we take the top hand and we grip the jersey, the blouse, with the top hand to restrict movement. So now when I stride, what do my hands do? I'm guaranteed in this touch system number one that the hands don't go backward or separate. I don't have a very big stroke. I certainly can't swing the bat very hard but what I'm trying to do is control my stride and at the same time control my hands so I can get the back knee to work and then I'm gonna hit from right there. It's a very short mini stroke. But we have found with hitters, and we've had great success with some, Pete and Cavillia worked from this position early on to gain control of his stroke, as did Robbie Wine, an outstanding young catcher with the Houston Astros. And both found this area, because they were so strong in their upper body, the best way to try to learn relaxation. So they worked from touch system number one. Touch system number two is up in here. It's along the same line, but we let the hitter take the bat from here up to here. The outstanding Philly catcher, Tim McCarver, hit from up in here for a long time. We had an outstanding young catcher a few years ago, Mark Poole, who is still in the Texas Ranger organization. He's played a lot of double-A AA and triple-A ball, and he worked from this particular position. He learned that he could let his hand stay right here against his ear, against his head, until he's got his stride out of the way, and until his back knee turned, then he could let the touch be released. That's the reason it's called a touch system. It's contact with a part of the body so that you feel what the hands are doing. We find so many hitters don't know what their hands are doing, and they don't realize they're separating or that they're Sally Sue, stride separate. Sally Sue, stride separate. Sally Sue, stride separate. And so the touch system gets rid of that. It gets us in a position where we're working on the lower body first. That's one, that's two. Number three, you'll see a Cal Ripken use this quite often. A lot of hitters will just let the bat stay right on the shoulder. It's comfortable. The elbows stay down. Remember, distance between the elbows is important to relaxation. And they'll stand here, and just before the pitch, they'll just raise it and move. We work right off this, right on top of the shoulder, is touch system number three. We like the touch so that you know where the bat is. Touch system number four, we move it to the back off the shoulder, down below the point of the shoulder, so that it's firmly pulled against that muscle. It kind of crimps the top hand, and it bothers a little bit power collector Y number three and the resulting pressure point number three, just a hair, but we still find that with long arm hitters, they find more success in touch system number four, and that they're able to turn, get to a power base and deliver, and their hands are coming into this area, they have a more consistent lever assembly in each of these touch positions because they're able to maintain relaxation. Number five is what we call a lag set. Rod Carew hit from here, just as a relaxation situation. And then as he went to the plate, took his stride, the hand certainly came up and came into a lever assembly and went on to a hitting area. And if you watch Carew, if you have any film on him, you'll find that he's one of the very relaxed hitters. If he really spends much time with good hitters, you'll find that they have relaxed bat. They have a loose bat. Good term, right? Loose bat. They're using their speed muscles and they're able to let the bat travel. Great term, I love it. Let the bat travel. Good hitters are strong downstairs, power base, relaxed upstairs, let the bat travel. Boy, it's a great combination. It's speed and control upstairs, power and explosiveness downstairs. Good feeling, good idea. Touch system. 